This is the video lecture on cost analysis. The first thing we're going to learn about in this video lecture is how to calculate contribution margin. Now every time a product is made and sold, it does contribute a certain amount of money to the business, but it doesn't contribute as much as you would think because the business does have to produce that particular unit. So the formula for contribution margin is the sales price minus variable cost. That will actually tell us how much the sale of that particular unit of product has contributed to the business. If you take a look at this particular example, say that we have a product here that has a $100 sales price, a $40 variable cost per unit, that means it has a contribution margin of $60. Or in other words, every additional unit of that product that is sold contributes $60 toward the business. Now once you learn how to calculate contribution margin, we also have a variation on that formula called contribution margin ratio. And this gives you the same basic information but in the form of a percentage. And the formula is the contribution margin divided by sales price. So using the same exact example that we just had, that product had a contribution margin of 60, a sales price of 100, so that gives you 0.6, which is the decimal equivalent of 60%. So that means that every additional unit of that particular product that is sold contributes 60% of its price to the company. Now once we learn how to calculate contribution margin and contribution margin ratio, we can then use that information to calculate many other things. And one of those things is called the break-even. It's very important for a business to be able to identify its break-even point. And of course at the break-even point, we would neither make money or lose money. You would just simply break even. And that gives us a basic goal that we can set our sights on, a basic goal that we can look forward to. Now if I want to calculate a company's break-even point, and if I want that answer to be in units, I would use this formula, fixed costs divided by contribution margin. If I want that same answer to be in the form of dollars rather than units, I would use this formula, fixed costs divided by contribution margin ratio. So either way I'm using fixed costs, it's just that I use a different answer for contribution margin depending on what format I want the answer to be in for break even. So to see an example, we have the same product we've been talking about earlier a product that sells for $100 per unit, variable costs of 40, the total fixed costs are $100,000 per month. So if I would divide that fixed cost of $100,000 by the contribution margin of $60, rounded, I get 1,667 units. So that tells me that this business will not break even until they have sold at least 1,667 units each month. I could also provide that same information in a different format and give a break-even point in dollars. And it would be just a slight variation on that same formula. I would still use the fixed costs of 100,000, but instead I would divide by the contribution margin ratio which we previously calculated to be 0 0.6, and I get 166,667 rounded. So that means until they have sold that amount of product, they will not break even. Now from time to time, once we have calculated the break-even point, we can then also calculate a revised break-even. And revised break-even is very helpful because many times that will help us make certain decisions. So to see a, an example of a decision, a dilemma that a business is trying to make up their mind about, this business is trying to decide whether or not to purchase a new machine. Now it says this new machine 
is going to be used in their manufacturing process. It will add $25,000 to the fixed costs, but it will reduce the variable cost per unit by $10. So as you can see, this is a bit of a tough decision because on one hand, it has a negative, and that is that it does add quite a bit to our fixed cost, $25,000, but the positive side of it is that it does lower those variable costs by $10 a unit. So this is kind of a mixed decision here. We want to see what the best thing would be to do. Should we buy the machine? Should we not? Well, one way to help us make that decision is simply to do a revised break-even. So the revised break-even, we were using previously $100,000 for fixed costs. Now we use $125,000. Because remember, it said it would increase the fixed costs by $25,000. And we have a new contribution margin of 70 rather than 60 because it did say it would reduce the variable cost by $10 a unit. And we get an answer of 1,786 units. Well, the problem is that answer is actually higher than our previous answer. So if we bought this new machine, it would actually take us more units of sales in order to break even. So actually we wouldn't want to do that. So our decision would be no, it would not be worth it to purchase the new machine. And so that shows you the value of being able to calculate not only the original break even, but also the revised break even because it does sometimes help you make decisions. Something else we can calculate in regard to break even is a target income. If we have a certain target income that we want to hit, we can figure out how much it's going to take to get us there using a variation on the usual break-even formula. If we want to have a target income in units, it would be the fixed costs plus pre-tax income divided by contribution margin. And if you look at that formula, it's almost exactly like the break-even formula the only thing we're adding there is the pre-tax income. Now one caution on pre-tax income, you have to be careful because you actually have to make more money pre-tax in order to clear that money after the taxes have been paid. So we'll have to do a little bit of a manipulation there to get that to work properly. And then if we also would like to have the answer in dollars, we could use this formula. Fixed costs plus pre-tax income divided by contribution margin ratio. So to see how this would work in an actual example, the business we described earlier has decided they would really like to have a net income of $10,000. And they happen to be in a 40% tax bracket. So the question is, based on the information we calculated earlier, how much product would have to be sold to achieve this target income? Well, in this case, we use our original fixed cost that we used earlier, $100,000. Then we have to add to that the pre-tax income. Now, this is where it gets interesting. They want to make an income of $10,000. Notice that we have $16,667. Where does that come from? Well, remember, they're in a 40% tax bracket. So they would actually have to make more than $10,000 in order to clear 10,000 after taxes. So the way it works is if I'm in a 40% bracket, I get to keep 60% of the money. So 10,000 divided by 60% gives me 16,667. So that's where that number comes from. That's a little trick on the pre-tax income. You divide the income by the opposite of the tax rate. Then I divide by the original contribution margin of 60. And that tells me that in order to make an after-tax income of 10,000, they would have to sell 1,944 units rounded. And then I could do the same thing again to give the answer in dollars. Again, 100,000 fixed costs, 16,667, that's 10,000 divided by 60%, divided by the contribution margin ratio of 0.6, that means that in order to produce $10,000 of after-tax income, we would have to sell $194,445 worth of product. 
The last thing we're going to take a look at in this particular lecture is the margin of safety. Now the margin of safety, this is going to show us how far off we can be on our predictions or our projections without losing money. The formula is the expected sales minus the break-even sales divided by expected sales. So in this example, this company wants to sell or expects to sell $250,000 worth. That's their prediction. But how far off of that prediction can they afford to be before they would lose money? Well, that's the expected sales, $250,000. So the expected sales, $250,000, minus the break-even sales, which we calculated earlier to be $166,667, divided by the expected sales once again of 250000 we get an answer of 0.33, which is the same thing as 33%. So if we're predicting sales of 250000 we can be off of that prediction by 33% before we would actually start to lose money. So that shows you an example of all the different things we can do in terms of different formulas to help us analyze our costs. Contribution margin, contribution margin ratio, two different versions of break-even, two different versions of target income, and margin of safety. And we're also going to do all this once again in a video demo where we're going to have a different set of uh, companies, different problems to look at, and we'll calculate these once again when we do the video demo.